do it. Yeah. There you go. Well, now that the year has ended and everything's slowing down, we're going to do a little review here for everybody. And um, let's start off with uh, what cons have you attended and uh, what was the furthest distance you actually traveled for a convention? Patrick. Uh, oh, I went to, I think, eight different cons this year. Uh, the furthest I went was BlizzCon in Anaheim, California, but that's not an anime convention, so I don't know if it counts. But uh, the, the, long it's your site. the longest was our trip down to DragonCon, where we drove from Boston. Yeah. 20 hours each way, something like that? Overnight. Well, with stops yeah. and sleeping on the grass in front of Mack trucks, you know? <laughs> longest to an anime con, I think. Uh, I don't know. Bakaritsu con, I guess. Drove up there. In the boonies? Yep. On Halloween? Iceman? Sure. <laughs> I also went to uh, Dragon Con in Atlanta. Yeah, but you flew. I flew. <laughs> it was a little quicker than driving. It was a little more comfortable. <laughs> I'm not jealous of you at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am. Wait, I was there. <laughs> well, let's see. The longest... I went to Anime Boston, New York Anime Fest, and the longest one I traveled to was Otakon, which was an interesting experience taking a large trade show booth on Amtrak and getting strange looks from conductors. I went to five cons this year, and I went to Dragon Con. I drove. I slept outside a truck stop. Drove. drove. She said I slept. <laughs> <laughs> I slept while men drove. I sat like this in the back seat, and yeah. not for anything fun, just was sitting there like that. Well, we also passed schoolgirls who were doing that for fun, but um, <laughs> since I'm wearing a skirt, I won't demonstrate, but yes, I do sleep like that, thanks. <laughs> I don't know how many cons I went to, I went to too many. Loser. I went to Aresia, I went to Costume Con, that was pretty amazing. I went to Amy Boston, Pork Con, Kinetic Con, Oda Con. And then another anime con. I think I'm missing one. So it's a seven or eight. You go to too many. What's wrong with me? <laughs> if, only there was some, if only there was some way, some place you could track these. <laughs> I know, some that'd website. be so convenient. <laughs> yeah, be. Like a planner. <laughs> the furthest I traveled was to Dragon Con, and then I drove to Costume Con, which is in Timonia, Maryland, this past year, right outside of Baltimore. And then I also flew to Otacon, which I hadn't been to since 2004. Well, well, this one was Dragon Con. <laughs> I drove most of it. So I was like, screw this, you drive. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I kind of lost count how many. <laughs> I mean, I used to go up to about like 18 a year, but that definitely wasn't this year. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> all, all, all the main ones I usually go to, Anime Boston and so forth. Um, yeah. But yeah, the longest, furthest drive and trek to a con would be Dragon Con for me too. So guys, throughout our, all the cons we've gone through this year, um, what was the most memorable event or panel that you attended? My go first. Let's go this way. Um, I think the most memorable event for me was the sci-fi and masquerade. Uh, sci-fi masquerade, sci-fi and fantasy masquerade, that's what it's called, at Costume Con. Um, it's definitely the best masquerade I've ever seen. But, you know, I like masquerades more for, like, the costumes and the present than, you know, skits and things like that. And just seeing what people came up with was incredible. And I got an award for craftsmanship, which was, like, amazing. <laughs> um, that was definitely my most memorable, memorable experience. I get to meet Patrick Stewart, <laughs> and he's kind of a hero of mine, he's kind of my favorite actor ever, and yeah, okay, fine, he also is half mask, and um, so we have that in common, and I had missed seeing him in England like several years ago, and so that was a huge deal, and I, I did wait in line three hours, and it was completely worth it. In retrospect, she also uh, was like, text, I've been waiting in line, anybody <laughs> want to come see Patrick Stewart? Yes. Woohoo! Third row! <laughs> <laughs> yes, we got really good seats, and I also brought playing cards, so it worked out. I'd have to say, being the mecha ner nerd that I am, seeing uh, Yoshiyuki Tomino in New York was pretty cool. He had a really cool keynote and really good Q&A session. But 
I also enjoyed my panel at my Boston because I had a really good group at that one. I can't think of any specific panel, but just being at DragonCon, the atmosphere and all the people there, I think it was really great kind of experience. You know, one of the top tier kind of experiences for this kind of fandom. I, I loved uh, the Mythbusters panel at DragonCon that uh, Adam Savage did, and Dr. Horrible Shadowcast, both at DragonCon and Aresia. That was fun to watch. But one of the one of my favorite experiences from the year was uh, Anime Scripted at Anime Boston with uh, PowerPoint Roulette, the first time he had done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was so much fun. <laughs> Our newly elected president. <laughs> I hear he has a flavor. <laughs> Uh, I, I think the only thing I could t possibly top that in terms of roulette of one of the anime unscripted events was uh, the cat face going, <laughs> and you start zooming in and out on it, and yes. Jekka just couldn't say anything for ten minutes, and everyone was just yeah. dying laughing. Like, in retrospect, just saying it, no, you couldn't, you're gonna have to pu put this up on the screen now. Yeah. But, oh, God. <laughs> the crowd's great. reaction to that, too, which is oh, like yeah. laughing for 20 minutes. We should video of that. Um, on, on a cos... Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Uh, more of a cosplay for me, um, I think my more, most, of, more, uh, most memorable event was uh, Emmy Boston hosting the 18 Plus Dating Game. It was probably the best run that we've done in the years we've done it. Um, all the contestants were really on par for making their subtle innuendo jokes. Because, you know, it's 18 plus, we get to get away with uh, the uh, raw humor. You say naughty words. They say, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I uh, directly quoted George Carlin during it. But, uh, yeah, that was, that was one of the more favorable events. I had a blast doing it. I still watch the video now. And uh, other than that, yeah, that was fun. one of the more fun events. So guys, let's continue on. Um, so obviously we go to conventions, and main the reason we go to conventions is because we have guests at conventions. Uh, what, any interesting guest moments that you experienced? Uh, you mean like a guest coming to the hotel room to watch us record this? <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to the man behind the camera. <laughs> uh, no, I'm gonna think uh, one that stands out is uh, the pork on Maine. Samantha Anyway Hart is a guest and uh, went to Extreme Geek. And uh, Julie got to the part where everybody had to eat the gross food. Mm. I don't even remember what it was. Um, one of them was a tomato filled with molasses, like injected with molasses. Another one was a rotted sandwich made from tuna fish and God knows what. Uh, like like uh, mustard pate, something. Yeah, paste, mustard. Peppers, all yeah. stuff. And so Sammy just couldn't take it and ran, ran out of the tent where this was being held. <laughs> all you heard was squeak, 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 yeah. squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> and she ended up getting an award because of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Pass. <laughs> yeah, He's fine. a care what you're getting. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Well, I, I, you know, I already mentioned Yoshio Kitomino, but uh, one of the other neat ones was just running into Chris Ayers when I was helping him I do facilities work for Anime Boston and helping fix his hotel room pro uh, problem. And he was just very grateful and it was just a nice experience and kind of have a break from the stress of staff work and just having someone say genuine thanks really kind of made that day so much better for me because I was so busy. Yeah, I don't really hang out much with guests, but um, I guess... To well, hang out, you go see them at their panels, I asked you, I don't get go to a lot of panels. I don't story. go to panels. Yeah, well, yeah, well <laughs> other than trying to rape him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I, I saw it. <laughs> I didn't pass out, though. That was really a plus. That was a huge plus for me. Um, no, I guess uh, we worked with Christina V. At oh. Con at Anime and Scripted. She was hilarious. Oh, I called her Michael Jackson and she did like the whole dance for me. It was fantastic. I was like, give her major props. And, and, then, we, and then whenever we did bump into her, uh, yeah, she was, like, she was like, oh my god, she was drops so everything and wanted to talk yeah, to us. Yeah, she was like, oh my god, these are my Anime and Scripted people. Let me give you a hug. She was amazing. <laughs> um, and then Tiffany Grant at Port Con really like cried over my bald spot. Um, <laughs> yeah, at, at Anime Boston, uh, we won Best in Show, but as a result, I lost a whole chunk of my hair right here from my wig, and okay. Tiffany Grant checked it out for me, and she freaked out, and she started crying because she said I had gorgeous hair, and she felt really bad. I'm like, thanks, that makes me feel so much better. <laughs> but she was cool. It was really nice. 
You're, you're worse than even Gally nerds if you make Tiffany Grand cry. <laughs> <laughs> interview a bunch of guests this year, um, Tiffany Grant, Daniel Kevin Harrison, Samantha in my heart, and Greg Ayers, that was really fun. And um, for like a guest panel at Dragon Con, me and Patrick and Patrick went to <laughs> the Crow vs. Crow panel, and I can't oh, remember yes. their names, but the two guys who have played Crow. Bill Corbett and Trace Blue. Thank I you. forgot about that. That, that was, was such nice. a fun panel, because uh, to see them talk about Mystery Science Theater 3000, which I love. And, and uh, yeah, yeah, TV's Frank was there in the audience. TV's Frank was in the audience. And got up and asked the question. Yeah, and every show it's so funny. It was great because I love that show, and they had like one of the actual robots on the on the stage with them, and that was really a lot of fun. Mm, let's see. Well, I mean, yeah, I've hung out with a lot of guests, um, mm -hmm. doing anime, anime script and stuff like that. Uh, but I think one of the more Funnier moments was when I was at Dragon Con and I was, uh, you know, people watching with my camera, just taking pictures, and I saw a cosplayer dressed up as Billy from Hocus Pocus. He was the zombie guy that was brought up to chase the kids. And in the original movie, the actor Doug Jones, which now is more famous for Abe and Hell, uh, Hellboy and Silver Surfer, well, what happened was, I was like, oh, I see Billy. Hey, I want to take an awesome picture of a really awesome cosplay. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, he's getting ready to pose. This guy actually, like, had his lips stitched. With, like, the, not, like, his actual lips, but, like, he had the stitches there. So he really couldn't say anything. And so I just, like, oh, yes or no question, you know, shake your head. Did you show this to Doug yet? And all of a sudden here, I'm Doug. I turn over. The guy, skinny, tall guy who was standing with his back to me, this guy, was Doug Jones. <laughs> And I go, holy crap, you are. <laughs> and I ended up talking to him for about like 20 minutes. Um, not really specifically about his um, his acting. I mean, mind you, you have to keep in mind that, you know, yes, he's an incredible actor acting through makeup. The, but the makeup is done by other people. But it still takes a talent to portray anything through all that crap on your face. But he was uh, a pretty cool guy. He was barefoot for some reason. And decided not to ask why. But just the whole fact you go... You can at a, that type of con. You can bump into these very obscure um, guests and actors and you know people of multiple uh, industries. Just going through the hotel, it was uh, you know you, you you get you know put back by that sometimes. So, all right, now since we are you know a website is talking about cons, um, you know, and we always have you know our complaints or things about way certain cons go. Was there uh, any impressive thing a con or con staff did in your experience this year? I'll go first. Um, I'm sure everyone's going to repeat this, but um, Amy Boston fixing their registration problem from the year before was pretty amazing. Um, I didn't actually go through it because it was press, so I got to go through the special line. Um, <laughs> yeah, I went through the special but, line and I still from, like, took forever just compared what to I the saw regular line. And, um, Someone mentioned it on our forums recently. Every, the only thing that every single person does at a convention is go through registration. Some people mm -hmm. go to these events, some go to other events, but everybody has to go through registration. If that sucks, it pretty much ruins the con experience for some peop for people, and I think that was a big problem in 2008, and I'm glad to line see con. they fixed it. Yeah, line con. Yeah. I'm glad to see they fixed it so above and beyond. Fixed it. it was a very good job on their part. Yeah, um, after like the first bulk, of just to continue, like there's people waiting, but when it gets started, I never saw the line fill up the room completely ever, ever since it started going. Yeah, you know, it was that yeah. well run. I believe, I believe the report was the longest anyone waited in line was two hours, which that's that at was on, right at that's on, on site yeah. registration, which is phenomenal. And speaking from a staff standpoint, I do a lot of work with the <laughs> registration at other events, and the fact that people we're willing to give the convention another chance after, you know, something kind of catastrophic like that is, once again, one of those things that the fans kind of take you by surprise and kind of recharge your spirit a little bit. And that that was a really neat thing to see. I had the privilege of both working in 2009 and being in the line in 2008. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he printed out my badge twice. <laughs> you were in line to visit for like seven hours. At least. Oh yeah. my yeah. god. So, it's I mean, not so bad because I was on staff and I couldn't do anything. 
I felt really bad because I actually lost my badge, and because they needed me in the event, they made me cut the line of ten people uh, to get the badge remade. I was like, oh, I feel like such an ass. But I mean, I guess that's what Sean. people can do if they have a problem or see something wrong with the con, they can go and help themselves. But also that, uh, they did try registration this year, they did try many different things. They heard a lot of complaints and tried, you know, this automatic system where you scan a barcode. They hired uh, temporary people in an outside uh, staffing agency to help with it. So they tried many different things and they all seemed to work, so that's why it ran so well. They went at attacked every problem from every angle. I think though a lot of things in just moving out outside of Anime Boston, you saw a lot of conventions really kind of weigh what they wanted to do more carefully because of the economy and really mm -hmm. tried to make something that appealed to a larger group because some of the things is with a smaller market people are gonna pick and choose which events they're going to go to and if you can get something that's going to be more appealing to a larger audience, obviously that's going to be the better route to go. And I think people caught on to that idea a lot more than trying to make every single thing at a con, you know, this is for this group, this is for that group. And I think you, you saw all those cons that did try and... The, the, those cons that did try and have a little something for everyone, I think you saw them struggle a bit more because they didn't know what direction to go. Yeah, there were several things that were much more professionally run this year. I think not just registration at the Anime Boston, um, the Masquerade, having a new host this year, Uncle Yo, was much better. Um, it ran much smoother. I think, to me, it ran faster. I don't know if it was actually, it actually physically was faster. It just didn't feel so horrendously dragged out, dragged out yeah. and like long. It just actually went. I mean, it was still really long, but... I didn't feel like I was sitting there for 10 hours. I felt like I sat there for the actual length of the event. And uh, Kineticon's AMV contest was completely redone, and it was 10 times more professional and um, more organized. So. <clears throat> okay. Well, in just, you know, contrast, there was anything that was really disappointing in your experience at a con? I've been going to cons for... Ever. For, <laughs> or about 10 years roughly, depending on when you start the count. But this year at BlizzCon, there was the most disappointing <clears throat> experience was at the panel for the guild. Uh, they were screening questions, they were this Q&A period, and they had screeners at the microphone, and they'd ask, well, what's your question? And if it's not already been asked, or if it's a decent question, it's okay, go ahead. Well, somebody changed their question, and they decided to ask Felicia Day if <laughs> the carpet matched the drapes. And oh my God. I've never heard a more inappropriate question at any panel yes. or any convention event. It was, and I mean, she handled it well. And uh, but yeah, that guy should be kicked out. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just was uh, disappointed in fandom. How, how how did the rest of the group, like the audience, react to that? Oh, the audience, also. I mean, everybody knew it was inappropriate. Yeah. I'm sure the guy asking it knew it was inappropriate, yeah. but he wants to be cool. That guy. He was that, that guy. guy. He was that guy. Yeah, he was that guy. Uh -huh. yeah. I think that the other, some of the other things. It's you know talking about how conventions are growing and stuff. It's it's sometimes really frustrating to see some conventions that have been around for a while. You know, sometimes even larger ones. I mean, the, the example I say is New York Anime Fest, which, yeah, it's getting absorbed into New York Comic Con, but seeing a lot of the same mistakes they had made two years prior when they had gone. And it, it's, it's really frustrating from an attendee standpoint to see the same mistakes being made when they are easily fixed and things like that. One of the things I, I just could not believe was during Yoshioki Tomino's keynote there was a large musical stage outside literally divided just by an air wall and they actually it was drowning out part of his speech and it was really <laughs> kind of frustrating I think the staff actually had to go outside and tell him to, to, and cut, cut the sound because it was disrupting the main event which for, for an event like New York Anime Fest that's been around for a while and 
runs other events, you'd think that'd be something they pick up on right away. I think for me, as in like an overall experience, I'm still kind of disappointed by what's offered by for panels at anime conventions. Like I go to them and I look at the panel lists and like, okay, there's like two I kind of want to go to, and they seem like too fan based and kind of see things more industry based. Mm -hmm. One panel I really liked well, was a couple years ago was at Bakurotsu Con with Tiffany Grant and she talked about how script writing worked. And I found that really interesting and um, I think I just want to see more panels that aren't so specific about certain shows and certain series and more about things in general and um, like maybe more introduction things. Like I know I've asked Doug like 5,000 times. I want to watch Macross, and I want to watch Gundam, and I have no idea where the hell to start. <laughs> like, yeah. Things like that, and it just seems like so, you can't go to this panel unless you've actually seen the show. And I think there's way too much of that, and way too many cosplay-based panels of acting out certain shows. Yeah, I think also there's a lot of just panels that are just kind of cookie-cutter fan panel. Hey, we like this, and it's, you know, kind of that, that generic thing that you can see at any convention well, so that you go. Also, gush about it, panel. Yeah, it's and it, I mean, it, it's one of those kind of finite things where you have to un understand who your audience is and how to get kind of the right group and make a more successful panel. And I mean, part of the pro you know part of the problem is with a larger number of people, you once again want to you know figure out who you're appealing to. But it's you know I I, I do think. You know, this I guess would be a prediction for the long term. I think there is going to be kind of a cycle back to more of the industry panels, but it's going to take a little bit longer than you know an immediate turnaround. Well, I'd, I'd like to, in, on the topic of panels, I'd actually like to see conventions actually go out and seek out panels rather than just put up a form and okay, whenever we get submitted, we'll put that in the schedule until we're full. What? There's speed dating tomorrow. Twice. Twice. Yeah. The one that's not 18 plus really scares me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that should be illegal. <laughs> I, I do think, um, I really just lost my train of thought. <laughs> dog face. <Okay. laughs> and now, now, like, by saying dog face, you make him make a dog face. <laughs> <laughs> dog face. <laughs> But honestly, throughout the year, what is your favorite convention experience? Dragon Con. Dragon Con. The whole thing was one. Well, no, actually. Um, um, actually. Hooters! Dressed up as My Little Ponies! Yes! <laughs> Free beer! That can, go to, that can go to the next one. Um, actually, I really need to get to Dragon Con. As awesome as Dragon Con was, my favorite convention experience was Costume Con because I'm a costumer and, you know, I started cosplaying when I went to Otocon 2004 and then I you know, didn't go to conventions for a while, and then got back into it in 2007, and, you know, I'm in 27, and so I'm like, you know, how long can I dress up as anime characters and make stuff and things like that? How long can you? <laughs> <laughs> and going, um, going to Costume Con, where I was one of the youngest people there, and, um, you know, it's definitely not all anime characters. They love the anime and the cosplay, and they definitely want to see more of it, but... It showed me that I can keep costuming forever. Like, I have friends through Costume Con and through the International Costumer Guild, which I'm in, you know, who are my parents' age and older than I consider my friends, and they make amazing costumes. And it kind of, you know, showed me I can do this forever. Yeah, I can't dress up as card captor soccer when I'm 35. But I can, you know, create some original design or find a character I like that is age appropriate and still wear it to something like Costume Con or a sci fi con like Aresia or Dragon Con. I think that was that was a really good experience for me to have. I think probably the reason I like Dragon Con so much was partly that is that, you know, I'm I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Patrick's old, but I, I'm older, we're older, and I think because we didn't have um, a certain convention this year for 21 plus people, in fact, um, <laughs> shirts, yes, that we need to do again is that, you know, the age group at conventions is just really young, and you feel really old, and you feel really, like, oh my god, it's people, shut the hell up, 
And so you just don't enjoy it as much, but then you go to Dragon Con, people are older. Um, it just It's a different kind of atmosphere. Plus down south, we found out people were really into her whole costume hobby. Like in a way, even in public, that had nothing to do with the con, in a way that they aren't up in the Northeast. Well, the, they were more interested in understanding what we were doing, and they were very accepting of yeah. what we were doing. Yeah, I mean, we met, like, we went to Hooters, we met a football <laughs> team, and they thought it was the it coolest was football team there. Well, they were I mean, they I football like, fans. I feel like there's, like, a joke that's, like, well, made to be told here. The, well, here's the thing. They were a bunch of people who were Virginia into Tech. they were into football enough that they came from Virginia to Georgia to see their team play. So it wasn't like they're casual fans, and they thought it was the coolest thing they'd ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, and I think also is that I've always been a science fiction fan first. Anime was more of a recent thing. I was kind of more into video games. I'm I'm kind of a casual anime fan, so to actually be at like a science fiction convention, I was a little a little geeked out. A little. <laughs> <laughs> She was in heaven. <laughs> 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 well, probably one of my favorite uh, convention experiences was something just really simple. I ran the uh, mecha panel again at Anime Boston. It's something I keep doing every year, and I always have a lot of fun. And this year, I had a segment which was the five titles that every mecha fan should know. And I had a sound clip for each slide, which was just a little bit of the opening theme for each one, and about three quarters of the room sang along with each opening theme. Did it couldn't have asked for it, didn't you know, couldn't have planned it. But it was just a nice little thing and it just it made that that struggle that I had to get those sound clips to work in the presentation. It must have taken me two days to get them to sound right. Just all that much more worth it and it was, you know, something completely spontaneous. It really made me feel good. You had nothing? <laughs> He's a strong he, 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 he apparently needs to go more convention. I drag him to another uh, It's one con. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think so one, descriptive. I think one of my favorite experiences this past year was the Chibi Project panel at Anime Boston. Uh, it was originally planned to be just Jekka and myself, but then Liz showed up. Uh, and. Uh, she was one of the original founders of the Chibi Project with me. And then Buford, who did some of the firearms tests, showed up. So there's four of us up there who'd never been together before talking about Chibi Project. And I don't Story know if we'll ever get all four of us in that panel again, but it, it was great to have all of us there. And then failed doing an experiment together, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. Yeah. Their episodes for download too, so people can watch that. <laughs> On our sister site, Ch the Chibi Project. <laughs> uh, wow. I don't know if I can really pick out a favorite. Tardis. So let's move on Tardis. to Tardis. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if it's really my favorite. The most aggravating question I got. Okay, mind you, first thing, I built the full size Doctor Who, the Tenth Doctor Tardis, and brought it to a few conventions, and then. And the favorite thing is that people just, you know, eyes widen, mouth drops, and they're just, you know, amazed by it. And it always makes you feel good, especially when it's your project and people like it. The only thing that was favorite that people asked me questions. The only thing I hated about it was like, oh, is it bigger on the inside? <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. And if you don't see it, you're blind. Yeah. No, it's from the um, episode Father's Day. <laughs> when he opens the door and all you see is the inside of the police box. Hello. <laughs> um, but I mean, it it was a a joy and a pain making it this year, getting it to conventions. But once you did get it to conventions, um, people basically bugging out about it. You know, it was really good. Okay, come on, we got to finish this up big. So what what is the craziest convention story you got for us? Tell the pizza and beer story. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was pretty good. Wait, wait, let, me get, let me get my beer ready for this. <laughs> we, were, we were at KineticCon Saturday night. You know, it was pretty late. Yeah. 10, 11, some people were kind of... It's not late at all. I'm just tired, though. You, you I said kind of. A little hungry. A little, a little hungry. A little, a little bit of the munchies going out. A little wired, like most people around. So we order pizza. And, you know, it goes right to the hotel. So you just go down the lobby. And because so many other people got pizza, the guy came with like 10 orders. And our, ours was on the bottom, underneath a smaller order. <laughs> so our large pizza got mushed. So I'm like, 
come on, guy, you want to help me out or what? <laughs> so he's like, yeah, yeah, I'll just uh, free pizza for you. I'll bring it back next time I come around. So I'm like, cool. So he got a cinder sticks and a pizza with half the cheese left. And we were heading towards our room, and this guy who was either stoned, drunk, both, I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, he comes out with a plastic bag, and he's just kind of looking at me like, <laughs> you guys got, you guys got, oh, damn, got pizza. Girl, <laughs> he's got a little bag. He's like, oh yeah. He's like, I'll give you some beer. And they're like, I think we can make this work. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm sorry, it's a little much. Beer, like, you say? He's, I'm sorry, it's a little much. He's like, yeah, it's, it's good. So you know, six pack of beer for half of a free pizza. That you know, we got a free pizza later, so I think it worked out pretty well. So you got a six-pack of beer for nothing. Your pizza came later. That's awesome. <laughs> and you haven't. But the only downside was we had already already ordered beer through room service, so we already had like twelve beers, and then we had six more, and we're like, f. Oh well. And you didn't call it a bad thing. <laughs> Maybe like, you thought you, you didn't call anybody. You, just you guys were up. dead. Yes. Yeah, you true. guys were dead. Um, that's how she got to have that drink. Crazy toasters. That was lame. I had one and I forgot it. Mm -hmm. They'll come back to me. They should have this book down. You said to me. I failed. <laughs> crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah. Nothing too, too crazy. Aww. I think um, one of the crazier moments for me was at Otakon this year. Saturday night, A lot of I know a lot of people that run the main event, so after the masquerade was done, we all descended upon one Irish pub in the Inner Harbor. and promptly racked up a uh, $500 bill, and, but uh, and most of us were from Boston and they uh, they had a live band going on Saturday night and they asked, you know, is anybody here from Boston? Probably spotted one of our shirts and, you know, we all pipe up and so they start sitting, playing Charlie on MTA. So you've got about 20 of us <laughs> in the middle of Baltimore, you know, exhausted from working the masquerade, you know, a, a little, some of us half drunk, some of us fully drunk all singing at the top of our lungs, you know, Charlie on the MTA. <laughs> Some of us, you know, inserting uh, Dropkick Murphy's version. <laughs> it, it was just a really great experience and uh, just complete out of the blue. And I, th I think we paid, paid the rent for the, uh, the, bar, the bar that between that night and then when we went back the another night and did another $500 tab. <laughs> Oticon, brought to you by the fine folks of Enemy Boston. <laughs> <laughs> AAC and other anime con in Nashua, I decided to compete in Anime Jeopardy and um, I dominated <laughs> quite a bit and because they because they think the two people I were playing against are like 10 years younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> you call yourself nerds. And You're three, not of nerds. three of the questions were Sailor, <laughs> were Sailor Moon related. So yeah, I kind of dominated. <laughs> As in, like, at the end where you bet in Final Jeopardy, I didn't have to bet anything because they had, they had less than half my score. <laughs> oh. Jess, I think you need to elaborate on your bald spot story a little um, more. She kind of alluded to it. Okay, well... She told there was... Well, I kind of told it. I mean, we're in, we did the masquerade anime in Boston. If anyone saw it, it was a Sailor Moon Circus skit. Um, and I wear a lot of wigs, but I don't wear... usually wear wigs without bangs. And so it, it was bangless, and it was a short wig, and I had a huge wooden headpiece that weighed like 10 pounds. And so I was flipping out for weeks trying to figure out how it was going to stay to my head without, you know, staple guns. Um, and I have to do like, you know, lean back and, and dance and everything. And so a friend suggested to me, why don't you put combs in it? Okay, it sounds like a good idea. So I sewed combs into it. And so I wore it. It worked perfect. Nothing happened. But it, did, it was uncomfortable right here. And then by the end of the night, I was joking. I was like, guys, I really need to take this off. I think my scalp's bleeding. And I went back to the room and I took it off and it was bleeding. <laughs> and then and I turned it off, I had a huge lump, like goose egg right there. And I was like, okay, well, that, that, that's weird. Okay, well, it will, it will, the swelling will go down. It'll be fine. Until two weeks later, it scabbed over and then it fell off and then it had no hair. <laughs> and so I had like a half dollar size bald spot right in the center of my forehead and you can still see that this is very short right here I have fluff but it's back so I'm not going to complain but for months it was very obvious and everyone used to love to point it out but hey it grew back Tiffany Graham 
<laughs> but I won a giant cup, so it was totally worth it. <laughs> Not really so a great nice. story. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, to close this up, um, going into the next year, any good predictions for 2010? Hopefully the economy will improve so I can go to more conventions. <laughs> Nerd. <laughs> Nerd. Uh, uh, I'm going to KatsuCon for the first time. I'm going to go I think uh, at some point in 2010 we're going to see a convention, a, a fairly the 21 major... 21 Plus convention? I think we're going to see a fairly major convention <laughs> uh, dissolve. Really? I, I'm going to go out on a limb and make that prediction. I don't know which one, but I think there's going to be one that's either, I mean, besides New York Anime Fest merging with yeah. New York Comic I mean, we're going to see something that's like, yeah. Uh, Vanish. Yeah. Go. One, one of the big ones. Do you have a certain area of the country you think that's known? No, I think, I don't know. Just odds are, with yeah, the economy. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, yeah. I'm seeing so many cons appear, and then, I don't know, it seems like a lot of staff are, Kind of spreading out to smaller cons. And, I don't know. That, that's what I'm thinking. I'm hoping there'll be another 21 press convention. Yeah, I'm hoping that too. I'm hoping that three. <laughs> Welcome to our opening ceremonies. Bars are in the back. <laughs> that, was that was amazing. And oh, I drink it. Cut. Sorry, another convention story. We're in line for Dragon Con to get a registration pass, and you could buy beer. You buy beer. Oh. <laughs> you can buy true. beer. On the streets. On the, on the street. street. On the street corners. Waiting in line for a registry. If, if, if I have to quit my job, I'm getting to this. <laughs> I, remember, I took that <laughs> picture of you and Patrick saw this is the most epic line ever. Click. Yeah. Southern hospitality. Southern hospitality. Yeah. And they also, they don't just sell beer. They sell like wings, fried chicken. <laughs> I, I think we're going to see guests get even pickier about what conventions they go to now because there's more and you know they just have to choose as much to and be a little more choosy so I think some of the conventions are going to kind of shrink the scale of how many guests they bring and things like that that's my prediction I think attendees are too I mean it used to be you had your like mm -hmm. one con locally and now there are so many that are easily accessible to get to you can mm -hmm. actually pick you don't have to go to one just because it happens to be close to you No predictions. Make some predictions. So a year from now, we can look back on this. I predict I will go back to Dragon Con. Well, That's yeah. a big <laughs> prediction. Come on. What? Something Going on a limb. Some, wow, something. Go on a limb. You already know the, of a hotel room. Of course you're going back to Dragon Con. <laughs> Make some crazy predictions. Something, something crazy like... Like Nostradamus. Yeah. Carson you get it right. We're gonna. <laughs> We're gonna be whoa. You can be like Johnny Carson with a big hat. <laughs> um, 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 um. The envelope. The envelope right yeah. here. Yep. Yeah. A prediction of Johnny Carson will show up at an enemy convention. <laughs> He's dead. He's dead. Go on. <laughs> but if it happens. If he shows up, I'm leaving. <laughs> hey, hey, Scotty made it to Dragon Con. He did, and for five, okay, there's a guy dressed up like Scotty at Dragon Con, and he was so good for five seconds. I was like, oh my god, I didn't know he was going to be a guest, and then I was like, oh my god, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> you got anything? No predictions? I'm going to win the masquerade. Woo! I'm going to be an elite cosplayer. I am an elite cosplayer. At least you're not an elitist cosplayer. I'm not an elitist cosplayer, no. There's a difference. There is a difference. There's a huge difference. I help out the other people. No other crazy predictions for New Year? Um, I'm wondering if... Um, I'm wondering if maybe conven anime conventions will start to kind of transform into more general fandom conventions. Mm -hmm. Something along the lines of you know, a Kineticon or a Dragon Con because, you know, there's a lot of crossover, like people are friends with Doctor Who, Harry Potter, Twilight, um, sci science fiction, it's comic books in general. I, th um, I think I'd like to see that because you see a lot of gray areas with things like Avatar and, um, you know, I really like conventions like Dragon Con and Kineticon where there's something for everybody. I'm wondering if maybe the line will start to blur more. It will become sort of a pop culture convention. Yeah, pop culture. Mm -hmm. okay. pop culture. I'll make one wild prediction. There's going to be a vo uh, an, an English voice actor who's going to get very upset by some by what one convention does, either by the attendees or something the staff does. That'll be my prediction. There'll be at least and one. <laughs> 
and they stalk off. I think it's going to be like a big news. That'll lead to the con's downfall. Oh, yeah. I have a prediction. Oh, yeah. 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 That someone's going to propose to somebody else during a masquerade. Oh, oh. That never and they're going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> we can only no. <laughs> You're embarrassing me. No. <laughs> this isn't romantic. I have a prediction that someone, and if they have not planning it now, start a 1980s nostalgia convention because we'll all go. <laughs> and I will bring my My Little Pony costume. <laughs> Start it. Yeah. We have nothing else and we can do a rainbow bright panel. Alright. Let's Amicons.com's review of uh, 2009. Woo!